Hello children. In the last lecture, we have talked about some of the preventions or preventive measures of uh, infectious diseases. Now, there are two specific preventions. Uh, I mean to say there are two methods. First can be called as a general preventive me method and the second one can be called as a specific preventive measure. Now in the specific method, we can talk about immunization that we have left it to be discussed in the next lecture. So today we are going to discuss this immunization in detail. Uh, now children, you might be uh, curious to know what, what is immunization exactly? Immunization. Immunization. Actually, we are having our own immunity system. Immunity means uh, cap capacity or resistance against the diseases. So, our immune system is misled to develop a mem memory against a particular infection by introducing something into the body that mimics the specific microbe or antigen. So, whenever there occurs attack of a foreign body, specific antibodies are produced corresponding to that particular antigen which has attacked on our body. Now antibodies are the proteinaceous molecules. Let me talk about the antigens first. Antigens, these are the proteins or other harmful chemicals that are present on the surface of invaders. They are present on the surface of invaders and if I talk about the antibodies antibodies are the proteinaceous molecules made by made by WBCs and lymphocytes to fight against foreign bodies or other harmful chemicals it either engulfs and phagocyte it. It either engulfs and phagocyte it or makes it harmless and then makes them unable to grow and multiply. So immunization can be can be in better way can be achieved by a process that is called as vaccination which is done by vaccine. Now antibodies remain in blood for long and when the germs of a particular disease enter the body the antibodies destroy them with a faster rate. This is the basis of immunization. Now if I talk about the history, the immunization can be provided uh, best by the vaccination is provided by vaccination and this is the artificial immunity we are providing. Otherwise we have a natural immunity in our body that is provided by the white blood cells of our body. And if I talk about a vaccine, vaccination can be done by inoculation of a vaccine. And vaccine is what? It is a suspension of a disease. Suspension of disease producing microorganism. It is a suspension of a disease producing microorganism. So now a vaccine uh, is suspension so it is modified by killing or weakening so that the suspension will not cause disease. Rather it stimulates the formation of antibodies upon inoculation. Now if I talk about the history of vaccination. Actually two centuries ago an English physician named Edward Jenner realized that milkmaids who had cowpox did not catch a smallpox even during the epidemics. Cowpox is a very mild disease. Jenner tried deliberately giving cowpox to people and found that they were now resistant to smallpox. This was because the smallpox virus is closely related to the cowpox virus. Cow is vacca in Latin and cowpox as vacca bua. From these roots, the word vaccination has come into our usage. Now, the some common vaccines which are given, these are the DPT vaccine, 
for protection against diphtheria whooping cough and tetanus there is a bcg vaccine which is given to babies bcg vaccine it is for the protection against tuberculosis polio vaccine is given against polio there is a vaccine for typhoid which is called as a typhoid vaccine measles vaccine is also there which is a viral disease measles there is a tt vaccine which has been developed against the tetanus now there is a uh, besides this there is a pulse polio program and the aim of this program is to eradicate polio from our country it was first held in a country in december 1995 polio vaccine called oral polio vaccine the short form of this abbreviation is opv that is given to children orally through the mouth as per the national immunization schedule now let me talk about the non infectious diseases non infectious or in other words we can say non communicable diseases these diseases which remain confined to a person they are neither present at birth nor spread from one person to another the disease are caused due to some specific factors they may be caused due to improper functioning of an organ hormonal imbalance allergy cancer inadequate diet etc now these diseases can be categorized in brief like this there are following types first deficiency diseases these diseases are caused due to lack of some nutrient materials in our body like vitamins minerals proteins etc the second category of non communicable diseases is degenerative diseases these are caused due to aging or malfunctioning of any organ or part of body aging or malfunctioning of any organ it may also be a part of body or any part of body the third type of non communicable disease that is allergies the third category of non communicable diseases is allergies now allergies are caused due to hypersensitivity of an organism to certain type of material this can be pollen grain dust etc so we can say it is the hypersensitivity of an organism to certain type of material that material can be anything that can be dust that can be any food item that can be a pollen grain etc now last uh, or next category we can say that is uncontrolled growth of cell or we can call it as cancer or tumor and this is caused due to the uncontrolled uncontrolled growth of the cells in any particular area that uh, can lead to cancer and that can be cured in early stages only the non communicable diseases also include the mental disorders mental disorders there can be uh, occupational diseases also like lung cancer in asbestos fa factory workers addiction is also a part of non communicable diseases addiction is caused due to the excessive intake of drugs
tobacco, alcohol, etc. Now if I talk about the various infectious diseases and their agents, there are various agents which are responsible for various infectious diseases. They can be categorized as what? Types of diseases we can say or we can categorize them as viral diseases. They can be bacterial diseases. The diseases can be caused by protozoa which are called as protozoan diseases. And it can be caused by the category of worms that is called as helminth diseases. Now in this category of viral diseases, the various viral diseases, the most common viral diseases are in, like influenza, hepatitis, which can also be called as a jaundice, AIDS, rabies, polio, these are all viral diseases. In the category of bacterial diseases, this can be TB, tuberculosis, cholera, typhoid, anthrax, plague, pneumonia. In the category of protozoan diseases, it can be malaria, dysentery, etc. Helminths, the diseases which are caused by worms, they are teniasis, ascariasis, elephantiasis, etc. We can also learn the causative agents for them, like for influenza, the causative or infectious agent is myxovirus influenzae. For hepatitis, it's hepatitis virus. For AIDS, it's it's HIV, for rabies, it's Lysa virus and for polio, it's polio virus. Bacterial diseases, tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Cholera is caused by Vibrio cholerae, typhoid by Salmonella typhi, anthrax by Bacillus, plague by Pasturella pestis. Protozoan diseases, malaria is caused by Plasmodium. On the other hand, amoebic dysentery is caused by Antamoeba histolytica. In the category of uh, helmet diseases, the teniasis is caused by tinea solium. On the other hand, ascariasis is caused by ascaris. And the last, elephantiasis is caused by Vaucheria bancrofti. So this completes our chapter of diseases. Thank you children.